Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. An effect we get asked about a lot in our forums is the film flash effect, which is often used as a transition. It looks something like this. There are plugins out there that create this effect, but I prefer to use the stuff that comes with After Effects instead. Mostly because it's free, but also because it works just as well, if not better. It's easy to do, but it packs a nice punch, and with a little finessing, you can create some very professional looking stuff. By the way, that footage that I used was filmed at the Chinese New Year Parade here in New York City in Chinatown. It was pretty cool, and I figured it would be a great opportunity to get out there and try filming a little. Now, I'm just getting used to using a camera, and frankly, because of that, I missed a lot of the good stuff. Unless, of course, you consider the back of people's heads or their shoes good stuff. Fortunately, we managed to actually capture some usable footage, at least for the sake of this tutorial, which is really all I wanted anyway. Alright, let's take a look at the example I just showed you. Here we are in After Effects with two pieces of color treated footage, a dragon and then later on a chihuahua wearing traditional Chinese garb. It's the year of the dog and in Manhattan there are tons of dogs so people got really into it. Anyway, right now the transition between these two layers is just a simple cut and I'd like to create that nice film flash transition. So here's what we're going to do. Create a new adjustment layer by choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. As you can see, a new layer is created, although nothing seems to happen to the footage in the composition. Just in case you aren't aware of adjustment layers, the simple and incomplete explanation is that adjustment layers are invisible layers that you apply effects to, and as a result, any and all layers that fall below it in the stacking order get that effect applied to it as well. So if you had several layers that you wanted to apply an effect to at once, it's probably easiest to just create an adjustment layer. There's a lot more to it than that, so check out your help files for more information on this. Right now, in our example here, we're not seeing any difference, and that's because we haven't applied any effects to our adjustment layers. But that's about to change. For this effect to work, we're going to need to apply two effects to our adjustment layer. The first is the Fast Blur effect. Choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Also, let's apply the Levels effect. Choose Effect, Color Correction, Levels. Remember, if you're in After Effects 6.5 or earlier, choose Effect, Adjust, Levels. It's extremely important that you apply the effects in this order or it won't look nearly as good. Okay, so far we're still not seeing anything because by default these effects don't actually change the way any layer that they're applied to look. We'll need to make changes to the effect properties to see anything happen. Let's move to about the two second mark or so in the timeline here. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then let's set a keyframe for both the blur effects blurriness property and the level effects histogram property. The result is that at this point in time, both effects are at their default values with keyframes holding those values. With the adjustment layer still selected, hit U to reveal all keyframes. Let's move down about 5 frames in the timeline, and then in the effects panel, set the blurriness to about 7. You might notice that as we raise the blur value, the edges of our footage feather out of existence, revealing our empty black background. To fix that, turn on the fast blur effects property called Repeat Edge Pixels. Next, let's brighten the image up a bit by dragging the histogram's input white marker here in the Levels effect. As I drag it, you can see that the shot gets brighter. Right now I just want a little brightness added, so about here is good. That's an input white value of 150 or so, but it's going to vary from shot to shot. You'll have to eyeball it. Okay, let's move about three frames down in time and make a couple more changes. In the effects panel, let's set the blurriness down to 3, and then set the histogram closer to its original setting, but not all the way back. Yeah, that's pretty good. Next, let's move down another three frames in time, which should be the first frame of our Chihuahua footage. If it's not, just move down until you reach it. A frame or two won't kill the effect, and you can always tweak it later. And now for the bang. In the effects panel, set the blur up to a whopping 20, and then turn up the histogram as much as it takes to turn most of the screen white. If you find you just can't get it to happen here, you can always set the input black values into negative numbers, as I'm doing right now. Frankly, I think that even without it, it'll look good enough, so I'll just undo that. Anyway, now I'll move down about 10 frames in the timeline, and I'll reset the effects to their default settings. On each property that I've keyframed, I'll right-click on the property name, either in the timeline or the effects panel, and from the pop-up, I'll choose Reset. I'll do this for both properties that we've been keyframing. As you can see, this adds new keyframes set to the default values for those properties. 
By the way, this works for any property, not just effects. At this point, we're good to go. As we play back the composition, you can see that we have our flash transition. Now in this case, I set it up so the brightness went up and then down and then up again. That's just a matter of choice, just like the length of time that I chose for the transition itself. You should experiment with your shot until you get something you like. Sometimes a simple fast up and down on both properties is all you need. Sometimes you want to have it blink a few times, or you may want to time it to audio. Again, it depends on the mood of your piece and the footage that you're using. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that the color treatment was applied to the original footage using Andrew Kramer's Film Magic Pro cinematic color styles for Adobe After Effects, which I then played around with. You can learn more about it at www.videocopilot.net. Andrew is a creative cow leader and has made a bunch of great tutorials targeted at some very professional issues. Good stuff all around, so check it out. Now, looking at the piece as a whole, you may have noticed that at some points time and scale seem to get a bit weird, and, well, that's on purpose. You can play with time remapping and scaling or whatever else you want to make the transition feel a little more disjointed, which personally I think helps a lot. In this case, I just played with time. Since time remapping is a fairly deep subject, I'm going to skip it for now. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that later. But in the meantime, if you take a look at the project files for this tutorial, you can get a better idea of what I did. And as always, you can get the project files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.